so we were dealing with economic zoology in that last lecture we all had already discussed about the uh, apiculture today we all will be talking about the <coughs> vermiculture what do you mean by vermiculture culture i had already discussed that rearing and caring animal or uh, for our own economic benefit now see we uh, here we are vermiculture here we are concerned with the worms that is the earth worm so rearing and caring increasing the number of earth worm is called as the vermiculture now what do we uh, do with this earthworm why we are culturing the earthworm now students we all know earthworms they are considered as the very good friend of the farmer because they are fertilizing the soil and they uh, are very good detriver that converts the dead and decay organic matter into the natural fertilizer so here vermiculture is used to decompose the organic food waste material and convert it into the nutrient rich material to support the plant growth <coughs> charles darwin he has uh, called the earthworm like unheralded soldier of the mankind and farmer's friend working day and night under the soil and enriching the soil earthworm they are also called as the biological indicator of the soil fertility because their activity is responsible for physical and chemical changes into the soil which enhances the soil fertility but this earthworm they have many many species so on the basis of their habit and habitat and their type of feeding they are divided into the various categories on the basis of their habit and habitat they are categorized into the three form first is anasic anasic it is derived from the greek word that means out of the earth so these are the burrowing worms that come out to the surface at night to drag food down into their permanent burrows they uh, make their permanent burrows deep inside the soil uh, within the mineral layer of the soil note down because this can be asked into the uh, mcq dash earthworms dig the deep burrows into the mineral layer of the soil so you should remember anasic earthworm they build the deep burrows into the mineral layer examples also very important to be remember that lubricus terrestris then apos aporectodia longa and is isenia fetida these are the three example uh, of anasic and this can be asked for the mcq <coughs> then next category is endogy within the earth they are also burrowing worm only but their burrows are shallow and i think they are burrowing into the mineral layer but they are just burrowing into the uh, shallow layer they feed on the organic matter which is present inside the soil only so they will rarely come to the surface their example include the allelobophora chlorotica then aporectodia caliginosa then aporectodia rosea and octolacium cyanium so these are the three example of endogenic earthworm the earthworms which are staying within the earth students my screen is visible yes yes ma'am screen visible no ma'am like your name is only coming that is visible the next category is epidic 
upon the earth, these worms lie in the surface litter and feed on the decaying organic matter. They do not have the permanent burrows. That means they are staying on the surface only. So they are responsible for decomposing material. These are used in the vermi composting because see burrowing type. How can we use for the vermi compost? So usually we are using this particular and these examples are very much important for this particular unit. This includes the limbricans, rubellus, dendrobina, octidida, then dendrobina, atmc, dendrodilus, rubidus, and acinalia, tetraida. These earthworms are very much important and we are using this particular earthworm only. So here the question can be asked, uh, dash among the following use for the purpose of the vermi composting. So you should remember apogees are the form which are used for the purpose of the <coughs> vermi composting. Now on the basis of their feeding habit also they are classified. On the feeding habit they are classified as the dead tree. Tivores, detritivores means they feed on the plant litter, organic matter and mammalian dung near the soil surface. So these worms are responsible for formation of humus and they comprise the apogeic and anisic forms. Example uh, like Isenafidida, whatever example will come into the apogeic and anisic will come here also. Now second is the geophagus. Geophagus, they ingest the large quantity of organically rich soil beneath the soil surface. So these are generally humus feeder and they comprise the endogenic earthworm. They include the Ocidorhinida, uh, Thristonic and there are approximately 3000 of the species. So all are having the different type of the feeding habit and habitat. Now when we say vermiculture, so it is a very important thing. How do the we do the vermiculture? See, before starting the vermiculture, we should take all the parameters uh, in appropriate manner for the sustainable development of the vermiculture. Like <coughs> we should have the two table species. If you have taken the wrong species of the earthworm, then it is useless. You cannot uh, set up your vermi compost anytime. You should have the appropriate worm density. You should have an appropriate temperature, moisture, bedding, then whatever feeding materials you are giving. Say example, to maintain proper condition, everything, we should uh, keep the bed and density between 5 and 10 kilogram per meter. So whatever method, there are various methods we all are going to discuss here. So all these methods are uh, provided like carbon and nitrogen ratio should be about 40 as to 1 for effective decomposition. This ratio is very important and can be asked for MCQ ideal carbon as to nitrogen ratio for effective decomposition is dash so you should remember that effective carbon as to nitrogen ratio must be 40 as to 1 for effective decomposition so whenever we are adding the material so we should be very much careful about the ratio and we should measure the optimum temperature because uh, when <coughs> we are uh, Selecting the decomposer or that reward are the earthworm and they are non thermophilic. So, that particular time, if temperature is extremely high, they will move away or they may die also. So, apart from using cattle or cow dung as a bedding, we can use the trees like drumstick and subabul uh, and all planted. So, what will happen, all this plant, they will be helping to harvest the nitrogen. And this nitrogen will be available for the vermi composting. There are various uh, methods. Here we all are going to discuss three methods of the vermi compost. Windrose method we will be discussing. Then we will be discussing bed or beef method. And thereafter we will be talking about the flow through method. 
but this methods also have the sub methods that we will be discussing today so first we will be talking about the windows method so this uh, windows method is basically carried out into the long row of bedding and it is used to produce the large volume of the vermi compost suppose if uh, i am doing the organic farming <coughs> and if that particular time if i am doing uh, now here we are discussing about the vermi compost not the vermi culture and i have decided that uh, for my farming i am going only going to use the vermi compost vermi compost is a very good compost and the organic material which is prepared because of the vermi compost is extremely healthy and has high market value even if you will purchase the uh, uh, organic fruit like uh, whatever taste from the normal we are purchasing from the market their cost is a little higher but uh, uh, it is not that easily available that organic food you have to find especially in our area only few shops are there they are selling this organic fruit and all so their rate is bit higher but their taste is awesome so whenever we are uh, making this vermi compost so we can go for uh, any of the given method first we will be talking about the windrows method so in uh, this particular method windrows method it is specially used in the long rows of bedding and it is used to produce a large volume of the vermi compost so there are uh, three ways to perform this windrows method the first way is the static pile windrows it is the batch method batch method means children you will be preparing one batch one time bedding you will be preparing so this way one time bedding is been prepared and uh, this bedding is supplemented with a large quantity of uh, the hay and silage increasing the porosity of the windrows it also help into the increasing reproduction of the earthworm also because if more and more earthworm will be reproduced that will be uh, automatically vermi culture will also be done and you will be having more and more production so the poultry manure is used as a feed stock then uh, after that what they will be adding see when you will be adding the manure so uh, this manure will be acting as a feed stock with shredded fiber in the ratio of 1 as to 9 then thereafter the cattle manure to shredded fiber in 1 as to 19 ratio will be using and all this material is laid down into the windrows that are approximate 1 meter high and 3 meters wide an approximate 50 meters long see student it is very important to remember this uh, length or you can say the dimension of the windrows this can be asked into the mcq the dimension of static pile windrows is dash so you should remember it is 1 meter as into 3 meter into 50 meters so 1 meter is the height 3 meter is the width And fifty meter is the length. This window shows. Is one five fifty no? Yeah. One five fifty no? Yes, one meter high, three meters wide, and fifty meters long. Just a minute. See this height. should be 1 meter okay then this width should be 3 meter it is 3 year children i am not very much good in writing and this should be 50 meter length should be 50 meter okay now there is another one more method that is the top fit windrows continuous flow see in only difference between the static pile windrows and top fit is that here uh, it is a continuous operation the setup will be almost same worms are placed into the bedding and they when they feed upon <clears throat> completely uh, from the batch uh, whatever material you have added 
new bedding will be added and incrementally uh, we are adding this bedding on the regular basis <clears throat> so in this particular system what we will be doing we will be uh, adding the bedding first and then we will be inoculating this bedding with the worms and finally we will be covering all this with the layer of the food and see we should remember that the layer of the food must be less than 10 cm the worm tend to consume the food and after uh, that what they will do after consuming complete food now we have learned that for the wormy composting we will be using the worms which are uh, residing on the surface so as soon as their food will be o over so thereafter new layer of the food we will be adding so periodically we are adding the new layer of the food and replacing the bedding material gradually which are consumed by the worms so this way continuously we will be getting the wormy compost but see this particular static pile material uh, windows is very ideal uh, method in uh, the period when you are not doing any farming because farming is the seasonal operation so as soon as your season of farming is over so that particular time you can uh, work on this particular uh, vermi compost so here your amount will uh, what you are spending for the fertilizer will be reduced and automatically your demand agricultural uh, product demand will also increase so uh, this is a very uh, good initiative if <coughs> any farmer will take the steps now next is the wedges uh, that is the continuous flow in this system initial stock of worm in bedding is placed inside the coral type structure they are making the corals uh, this is approximately three-sided okay of not more than three feet height max to max it should be of three feet height the side of this coral can be made up of the concrete it can be made up of the wood or even the bales of hay or straw so uh, if say student in our college we do not have the wormy composting but we have the composting so whenever you are entering into the college so that time you will observe that we have uh, this type of compost bin near our gymkhana. So you can see this type of composting is done in our college also, but we are not doing the vermi composting, we are doing the normal composting process over there. But the benefit of doing vermi composting that the process become very faster. Then next method is the beds or the bins method. Here also two types are there. One is the top fed beds. Now here it is going to be a continuous flow. So what we will uh, doing in the case of the top fed bed, uh, only difference is that between this and windows is that, that it is happening within four walls. Otherwise what we have learned in the case of the top fed windows, the method will be same what we have learned into the top fed windows that uh, upper layer 10 centimeter food is added again and again but in the case of the windows what we have observed that it is happen into the open farmland but here we will be doing it into the container or you can say the four walls so that bed can be built within the insulated side see it should be properly insulated you can use any method uh, for insulating it. Ready-made uh, bags are also available as I have shown it on my screen. Otherwise, uh, we can insulate it by the bales of straw or we can insulate it into any type of the bins, large shelter from the wind and the precipitation. Now see, this particular uh, method is usually used in the winter or you can say the extreme temperature to prevent this type of bed from the atmospheric effect. So if we are making, ideal is the wooden bin. So if you're using the wooden bin box, so we should use with the height of one into two into three. That means it should be one feet long, two feet wide and three feet. So overall dimension will be three uh, into two, six square feet surface area used to handle an average is see 
एन एवरेज थ्री किलोग्राम गार्बेज और फूड के लिए वी कैन डू सो हियर दिस कैन बी दिस मेथड कैन बी वेरी मच आइडियल फॉर द फैमिली ऑफ फोर टू सिक्स पीपल दो आर प्रोड्यूसिंग अप्रोक्सीमेट थ्री टू फोर के जी ऑफ द वेस्ट बट इन अवर कॉलेज कैन कैन बी हैव अप्रोक्सीमेट फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी के जी वेस्ट इज बिन प्रोड्यूस ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट इज बिन प्रोड्यूस सो दैट्स वी हैव बिगर कम्पोस्ट इन अवर कॉलेज दैन नेक्स्ट इज दिस टैग बिन और यू कैन से द बैच इट कुड बी बैच ऑफ कंटिन्यूस मैथड दिस इज वेरी मच आइडियल इन द होम इफ यू आर डूइंग इट फॉर द होम पर्पज दिस बीन्स आर स्मॉल एंड लिफ्टेड इजीली बाई हैंड और वी कैन यूज द फॉक्स टू लिफ्ट इट <coughs> now how we are doing we are adding the worm into the bin and thereafter we are stacking bins for predetermined length of time and thereafter as soon as we are uh, getting means uh, we are feeling that yes the manure is ready worm compost is ready so that particular time we are replacing it into the next bin so this uh, size of bins is usually 1.2 meter square and it may have depth of 30 to 40 cm so each bin is inoculated with approximate 2.27 uh, kg of worm and all the material is completely processed after 6 months and worm population is increased 4 to 5 times so the best about all this method is that the worm population it is always increasing in any of the method is approximate 4 to 5 times so every time we are not uh, required to invest into the worm so worms are automatically cultured so that worm only we are going to use for the next method flow through reactor method this concept was developed by the dr clive edward and his colleagues into the england in the year 1980 so in this system the worms are live in and raise into the box usually we are using the rectangular box and not more than 3 meters wide the uh, materials are added from the top and product is removed through a grid at the bottom so usually hydraulically driven breaker bar we are using for this particular uh, purpose the term flow through it refers to the fact that worms are never disturb in this particular bed so the material will be going from the top that will be flow through the reactor and as soon as it is been processed so thereafter it will be coming to the bottom and uh, as soon as it is settled into the bottom there is a collection chamber and from the collection chamber we are collecting the whatever uh, materials or you can say our vermi compost so this is about the methods now the most important thing in this vermi compost is maintenance and harvesting first we will be talking about the maintenance there are five essential things for successful vermi culture one is that uh, very hospitable in living environment you can say usually a uh, bedding it should be very good and it should be very much accurate then what food source you are giving the what is the ph of given food source then we should give them adequate moisture otherwise if the soils will be dried completely that will become very difficult for the worm to process and they are using that particular uh, area only so for that particular reason they required the adequate aeration then ambient temperature and other environmental condition must be very ideal so uh, when we talk about the bedding bedding containing the biodegradable material provides worm with the stable habitat it should be highly absorbent and able to retain the water whatever bedding you are giving materials having good bulking potential and low protein or nitrogen content are suggested as ideal as shredded cardboard paper or you can say the newspaper coconut husk fiber or sawdust high protein and nitrogen contents are very much unsuitable why because they can result into the rapid degeneration and excessive 
eating and it may be fatal for the worm so for that particular reason we should give them the light materials card paper and all now what food source should be given under ideal condition worms are able to consume food equivalent to their body weight each day so we must know that how much worms we are inoculating so as per that we should give the uh, food to them because uh, see only one most important simple funda we should remember that they can consume food equivalent to their body weight each day <clears throat> so that means each day their body weight is also increasing so as per that we have to uh, calculate they will eat anything organic like material of plant or animal origin such as for cattle poultry sheep goat manure as well as uh, fresh and good scrap such as you can give them peels food preparation wastage leftovers commercial food processing waste yeah fir you can give them seaweed legume hays then grains cardboard paper fish uh, poultry or blood slaughter wastage any type of waste you give them they will convert a very good product see here although we are concerning about this vermi compost here but understand in india we have waste disposal is a major issue so all this waste if it is consumed by worm so automatically they are uh, reducing the burden on the municipality to carry that particular waste right so if you are producing that much of waste every day and if this worms will consume they will not only consume they will be giving you in turns a good manure also so that vermi compost is of very high quality then moisture uh, because they breathe through their skin now recently we have learned the respiration into the earthworm and what we have learned about their respiration that they possess the cutaneous respiration so uh, that you need only we have learned the most important property of the respiratory surface that the best respiratory surface is uh, which have the moisture appropriate surface area and all but here i am concerned with the moisture so if their skin uh, skin itself is having moisture but if the environmental moisture content is less than 50% into the bedding so that particular time their skin will start losing the moisture so that will become very dangerous for earthworm to breathe with the exception of the extreme heat or cold nothing will kill worm faster than lack of adequate moisture whatever even if temperature is extreme they will tolerate it but if the <clears throat> they will lose the moisture from the bedding they cannot survive so it is very important to maintain the moisture into the soil the next important things are the aeration why aeration is required because they are the aerobic breathers right they respire uh, or they exchange the oxygen so that particular time they cannot survive into the anaerobic condition high level of the grease in the food stock or excessive moisture may cause the poor aeration and they may cut off the oxygen supply all this will result into the anaerobic condition and death of worms can cause because see if moisture is important but if you will add tons of water what is going to be happen student is yes, student if any problem unmute yourself and say do you have any question please unmute yourself and ask yes any question I feel no, anyone has raised the hand. Okay, no issue. Ah, 
So, see, the gas which they require for respiration is oxygen. So, if you will add uh, more water, so what is going to be happen? All the pores into the soil, they will filled with the water and the uh, air from them will be escape out. So, it is going to create an anaerobic situation and that will become very dangerous for earthworm to life. The next important thing is the temperature. <coughs> it is generally considered necessary to keep the temperature above 50 to 20 degrees Celsius for efficient vermicompost. pH, when we say so, pH should rate, see, optimum temperature and pH, important to remember. Remember, optimum temperature is above 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Optimum pH is 5 to 9. But out of that also 7.5 to 8.0. It is the best pH where you will get the best growth of the earthworm. So note down the optimum temperature above 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. And pH, optimum pH 7.5 to 8.0. Now, next important factor is the soil content. Bombs are very sensitive to soil, preferring soil content less than 0.5%. Uh, see, simply, if you will add a pinch of salt over an earthworm, the earthworm will die immediately because it will cause serious irritation on their skin because they uh, respire from their skin. So immediately they will die. Then urine content, manure should be leached before use since excessive urine builds up the dangerous gases like ammonia into the bedding because we are using the dung as a manure. So that may have the urine also. We should leach it before doing that. There might be toxic compound warming medicines into the manure. Then particularly horse manure create problem for the worm. Detergent industry, chemicals, pesticide, then tannins, etc. That can harm the worm. So take care what uh, waste you are using for them. Then we should take care of worms from the pest and diseases. So this is all about the maintenance. Now methods of harvesting. We are harvesting uh, the worms to sell, right? Uh, because we are doing it, whatever we are learning into the economic zoology, we are taking it for the purpose of selling, right? Purpose of uh, marketing. So to start new worm beds, uh, people are purchasing this. So how to harvest this? So there are various methods for harvesting these worms because these are the live things. So here are the three methods. The first method is the manual method. That means uh, if the small scale growers are there, particularly who sell worms to the home vermicomposting or bait market people. So they people, they are doing the manual harvesting. Uh, this is a very simple method. They are sorting the worms with the hand and picking the worms directly from the compost by hand and transferring it into the container then that they followed by weighing and preparing it for the delivery so this process is repeated until there is nothing into the culture then next is the migration method or you can say the self harvesting method worms has tendency to migrate to a new region either in search of food or to avoid unfavorable condition like uh, you are bad. You have not taken care for the bed, and the bed is excessively dry, <coughs> or maybe they are not getting the appropriate other environmental parameters like light, moisture, air. So for uh, that particular reason, they migrate. So harvesting migratory worm is use of screen or onion bag or growers is very common so this screen method is very convenient and easy to use a box is constructed with the screen bottom and thereafter they are converting then upward migration system is similar 
they are keeping the onion bags or something so all the worms they are coming and gathering there the next method is the mechanical method it is uh, harvesting most rapid and easiest method for separating worm from the wormy compost this particular method was described by the Bogano in 1996 in this method a mechanical harvester or simply you can say the trammel device is used which is a rotating cylinder about 8 to 10 feet into the length and 2 to 3 feet into the diameter. So this cylinder walls are composed of the screen material of different mesh size. So they are just simply clearing the bad materials and they are uh, cleaning the uh, worms from that and they are harvesting it. So this is all about the vermicompost. But what is the economic importance of the vermicompost? <laughs> Earthworm, they play a very important role as a decomposer into the various food chain. So that's why it helps in recycling of the nutrients. So for that particular reason, to enhance the soil fertility, wormy compost enrich the soil with nutrients and it increases its marketing uh, like potas potassium, magnesium, all this uh, compared to the com uh, your normal conventional compost we are making, all this uh, wormy compost is very much enriched. So for that particular reason, it has a very good economic importance. The most important advantage is it is easy to perform and does not require any type of expensive or sophisticated equipment. Only main player of this thing is the worms, earthworm. The best about it is that it is eco-friendly and socially come economically viable in convenient technology. It can eliminate the dependence on chemicals and bring wasteland under the cultivation. Even if uh, you have the arid type of land and you want to start uh, your farming over there, so that particular time you can utilize that particular land. Even in home also, uh, I am not doing the wormy composting, I am doing the normal composting for my uh, plants. Now I don't have the kitchen uh, garden, I am just doing all this planting in my grill. But for that reason also, I am utilizing the composting only because uh, getting the suitable quality earthworm and uh, all becomes very difficult to get. It can eliminate dependence on the chemical still date. I am doing all this uh, planting since years. But till now, I did not purchase any type of uh, chemical fertilizer till date. So it is very... Uh, uh, eco-friendly as well as the healthy and the best about it that your uh, land will never ever get arid or see when we use the chemical fertilizer so excessive use of the chemical fertilizer then uh, slowly slowly land will start losing its fertility and it start becoming arid and nutrient poor what happened when you do the cultivation on the land so that particular time whatever nutrients are present into the soil everything is taken up by the growing plant so that makes the soil poor into the nutrient so for that particular reason to reach when i eat if you are adding the chemical fertilizer so uh, it is just supplementing it like you are very much uh, ill okay and you are feeling so much weak and you got the malnutrition and you are just taking the supplement and still eating the vada pav. You are not taking any healthy food. What is going to be happen? With the help of supplement, your uh, malnourishment will go, but you will not get the endure health, right? So if you require the good endure health, so what you should do, you should take the proper diet. So it is also like that only children. That if you are giving all this nutrient in organic form, in the form of the wormy compost, so that particular time your soil will enrich with the nutrient as well as soil will become more and more healthy. The presence of microbes in the wormy compost is responsible for transforming nutrient into the form readily taken up by the plant. <coughs> so the plant do not do any additional efforts for uh, harvesting all such nutrients 
वर्मी कंपोस्ट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इम्प्रूव सीड जर्मिनेशन एनहेंस सीडलिंग ग्रोथ एज वेल एज डेवलपमेंट एंड इंक्रीज प्लांट प्रोडक्टिविटी वॉर्म कास्टिंग रिपेल हार्ड पेस्ट ड्यू टू द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनजाइन काइटिनस विच ब्रेक डाउन द काइटिन इन द इंसेक्ट एक्सो स्केलेटन सो इफ यू आर यूजिंग द वर्मी कंपोस्ट एनी हाउ इट इज ऑल्सो प्रिवेंटिंग द प्लांट फ्रॉम द पेस्ट वर्मी कल्चर इज यूज टू कन्वर्ट द म्यूनसिपल एंड इंडस्ट्रियल सॉलिड ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट इन टू द ऑर्गेनिक फर्टिलाइजर सो दिस वे इट इज ऑल्सो गुड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ द वेस्ट डिस्पोजेबल demand for the earthworm earthworm have potential for generating the npk equal about 10 to 12 million tons in india and about 1200 tons of organic waste can be degraded into 350 tons of vermi compost student this statement is very important so i i will repeat it all of you please note it down in in india about 1200 tons of organic waste 1200 tons of organic waste can be degraded into 2 350 tons of vermi compost okay in india so much waste is been produced waste is the major issue in our country because of the population and out of that lots of organic waste is there so if we can uh, start doing the vermi composting so it will be converting into a very good quality of the tons of vermi compost university of agriculture science bangalore initiated the vermi culture in india and propagated the knowledge of farming community then green growth society of mumbai a non profitable uh, organization has set up several project to convert organic waste into the vermi compost a small scale universe uh, unit with capacity of 4 tons of slaughter house waste per day and a large unit with capacity of 20 tons of vegetable waste per day has been set up in collaboration with bombay municipal corporation in our area also kalyan i don't know whether kalyan municipality has set up or who has set up but we have uh, in our fish market they have then they are converting uh, they are doing all such composting work earthworms are increasingly being used into the organic farming practices instead of chemical fertilizer now i have already discussed about it that when we are using the chemical fertilizer it is just uh, supplementing the nutrients but for enhancing the soil fertility organically grown food product uh we should reuse the vermi compost and when you will be using such organically grown food product so it will fetch a very good market price because it have a very good taste earthworms are also useful uh and it is also used as a fish bait vermi meal and in vermi cuticles worm meal is one of the most important commercial fish feed and it is also used as delicacy into the human food due to high protein content into the vermi meal it is utilized as a food in pig and the poultry form also earthworms is also used into the various medicine into the yunani system of medicine to treat diseases like uh, pyorrhea smallpox jaundice and many other rheumatism diseases are been uh, cured by using earthworm they are also used in healing of wound chronic boils piles and sore throats and many type of diseases are been cured by earthworm so if you are just uh, doing the vermi composting you will not only get the vermi compost as i told you that at the end of the vermi compost you will find that the size of earthworm is increased four to five times so if you will harvest that earthworm and if you will sell that earthworm you will be having very good market price so marketing of vermi compost whenever we are doing anything we uh, for the economic purpose our main thing is to take the things into the market so marketing of vermi compost is now a very flourishing industry due to increasing awareness among the people about the ill effect of chemical fertilizer and if uh, you will be using this type of vermi compost and eco friendly material so you will be having very good uh, market so about 3000 to 6000 per ton of compost has been uh, prepared and if you will see the retail market it fetched the price 
20 rupees per kg one of the leading industry to producing vermi compost in maharashtra is bhavalkar ecological research institute which is located into the pune many young people in other state and cities like chennai in tamil nadu and bangalore in karnataka are involved in producing and selling the vermi compost for kitchen and garden ornamental plant it is not only serve as the efficient manure but it also saves money usually which we are spending on the fertilizer so uh, it has a very good scope for the entrepreneurship if you want to start the vermi compost you can uh, you don't require so much of effort only the thing is that you have you required the waste and if you will be utilizing the waste automatically we are uh, serving the clean surrounding we are getting the clean areas we will also get the good environment good health as well as the good money so here in the economic purpose we will first concentrate over the money so we will be getting the good money after selling all such vermi compost so this is all about the vermi compost and the vermi culture next lecture we all will be talking about the dairy sciences if anyone have any doubt can ask me